Hello everyone. In today's video, we will discuss about SOC or Service Organization Control. I would like to thank each one of you for your great support in my last video on cloud computing. So in this video, we will understand the basics of SOC compliance like what is SOC? What are the different versions of SOC reports available? Why it is mandatory for the organization to be SOC compliant? And what are the criteria tested during the SOC audit and many more. So stay tuned till the end of this video to get an overview about SOC. But before we start, if you are visiting my channel for the first time, then please like, share and subscribe. So let's begin today's video. In 2010, American Institute of Certified Public Accountants or AICPA announced that the existing SAS 70 standard will be replaced by a new auditing standard called SSAE 16 or Statement on Standards for Attestation. The history of SAS 70 was intended for financial and accounting auditing only, but SSAE 16 audit was designed to verify the data center's operational and security excellence. In the new SSA 16 standard, there are three reports available, namely SOC 1, SOC 2 and SOC 3. So let's discuss each one of these in more detail. As you can see the hierarchy of SOC, it is divided into three parts, SOC 1, SOC 2 and SOC 3. Now what is the meaning of these three different reports? So SOC 1 report is mainly used for examining the controls over financial reporting, whereas SOC 2 and SOC 3 reports are more focused on the predefined standardized benchmark for controls related to security, integrity, confidentiality and privacy of the data centers, systems and information. SOC 2 goes in detail on examining the details of operational effectiveness. As per the AICPA guidelines, these reports are very detailed and useful to understand the oversight of the organization, supplier management process, governance and risk management and regulatory oversight. SOC 3 is for public use and provides the high, highest level of certification and assurance of operational excellence that a data center can receive. The major difference in SOC 2 and SOC 3 are that SOC 2 report provides auditors testing and results and SOC 3 provides a system description and auditors opinion which organizations can make it public. But SOC 2 reports are not made public and shared only with the NDA in place. So NDA means non-disclosure agreement should be there between both the parties before they share the SOC report. We have seen earlier that the SOC reports are divided into three categories as SOC 1, SOC 2 and SOC 3. But as we move forward, we see further classification of SOC 1 and SOC 2 as type 1 and type 2. So let's understand the meaning of these reports. Both SOC 1 and SOC 2 reports can be assessed as either type 1 or type 2. Now the question is, what is the difference in both the reports? So in type 1, the report is issued as on a specific date mentioned, like as on today's date, which means the tested controls are working as expected as on the date mentioned. But in type 2 report, is issued from a specified period like, you know, 1st January 2019 to 31st December 2019, which means the tested controls effectiveness were audited for the specified period and found to be satisfactory. So this is the major difference we see when we review the type 1 and type 2 reports. I hope this is clear now. So now let's see the purpose and usage of SOC 1, SOC 2 and SOC 3 reports. SOC 1 Internal Controls Over Financial Reporting Used by Auditors SOC 2 Security, Availability, Integrity, Confidentiality and Privacy Controls are audited, shared under NDA by management to their existing or potential customers. SOC 3 Security, Availability, Integrity, Confidentiality and Privacy Controls are audited, publicly available to anyone. So to share the SOC 3 reports, you don't require NDA in place. Now let's understand the Trusted Service Criteria or Principles of SOC Auditing. The following principles and related criteria are used by practitioners in, in the performance of SOC 2 engagements, which are security, availability, integrity, confidentiality, and privacy. Let's get into more details in each one of these areas. Security. The system is protected against unauthorized access, both physical and logical. Availability. The system is available for operation and use as committed or agreed. 
process integrity system processing is complete accurate timely and authorized confidentiality information designated as confidential is protected as committed or agreed privacy personal information is collected used retained disclosed and destroyed in conformity with the commitments in the entity's privacy notice and with criteria set forth in the in generally accepted privacy principles issued by the AICPA and CIC now the question is why SOC is so important for the organizations so it's very simple SOC reports help companies establish trust and confidence in their service delivery processes and controls that gives confidence to their customers about the controls implemented to protect the information and information systems thank you for your participation in this journey with me and if you like my video then please share subscribe and comment also let me know on which topic you would like to see in the next video till then bye stay home and stay safe